Moon Base Alpha status report. 2012 days after leaving Earth orbit. Dr. Helena Russell recording. It is now three weeks since we sighted the space phenomenon we call Tora. Within the next 24 hours, we shall know whether it is a habitable planet. But false hopes have been raised before. And since Commander Koenig doesn't want to raise false hopes again, he has ordered the few people who are aware of the situation to keep it secret. Command Center has been put off limits to all but a few chosen personnel. The picture's gone. I don't understand it. We've got a right to know what's happening. Well, something is, that's for sure. The command center's off limits, the screens are all blank. We're approaching a planet. A habitable planet, I'm sure of it. You've predicted it before. Yeah, well, these things take time to work out. But why is Kearney keeping it from us? Oh, I can guess. Why should we guess? Let's find out. Craziest guy. I mean, he came up to the redhead, you know, um, you know, something technical. What's that mean? Um, I don't know what you mean. Sure you do. You know, the crazy red... What, you got something? Tora, it's shifting position. Maya, my instruments show a change of position. Can that be correct? Hmm. My sensors record a source of internal energy, which has caused a definite change of position. Keep tracking it. You know, Commander Koenig saw this. Command centers off limits. Well, if those are the commander's orders, <laughs> time they were changed. Don't tell me I'm not supposed to be here, right? Well, I am here. And I'm gonna find out what you've got on that screen. Well, you're off limits, Sanderson. <laughs> Eva, open the big screen. Shut the doors. Like I said, a planet. But is it habitable? We'll need another astral prediction for that. Let's get prepared. Eva, turn off the computers. Concentration. Total, Total concentration. concentration. Total concentration. Total concentration. It can't be. It is. We've got to get back immediately. Eagle Four to Moon Base Alpha. Center, respond. With trees. Command grass. Center, do you read me? Calibration shows Tora and Moon Base Alpha on direct collision course. See? Go to red alert. A habitable planet. Go to red alert. And grass. It's a habitable planet. A habitable planet. The prediction was right. It's a habitable planet. He's in there. Sanderson! 
Sanderson! As far as I'm concerned, it's criminal. It's green sickness, John. You know the symptoms. Is mutiny one of the symptoms? Well, it could be, but I have to take responsibility. Responsibility? For what? Mutiny? We all know that surface exploration units like Sanderson's have it rougher than the rest of us. Living out there alone, having nothing to look at but bare rock for a month at a time, they're paying the price. I should have seen it coming. None of the other teams ever reacted this way. Sanderson's team has always done more and stayed out longer. And the other teams are beginning to show signs. I'm going to have to limit surface exploration to 15 days maximum at a time. All right. To find Sanderson and his team to medical center. On the guard. What have we got? Internal energy. Electrical storms. Rain, sleet. An atmosphere. That's a vast weather belt, in fact. Could we travel straight through it? What if the atmosphere doesn't clog up our recycling systems? There may be a solid center. Which could mean a planet. Sanderson's habitable planet? Well, let's hope Maya's instruments are wrong. Because if Tora's got a hard core and we're on a collision course with it, then God help us. Alan, have a reconnaissance signal prepared. Right. Maya, come with me. My preliminary diagnosis is that you're suffering from a condition that we've termed green sickness. That's a convenient fiction, Doctor. It's a neat way to cover Koenig's lies. Now, listen to me carefully, Craig. You are one of the first people assigned to Alpha, and the psychological pressures have had longer to build up in you than in everyone else. I don't buy that, Doctor. You want to marry? children, you feel that your life is slipping away. And the others? They follow your leadership. Yeah. It's no secret that you're the best exploration team leader that we have. You've pulled Chernick and Stevens and Eva out of trouble a hundred times. They've come to rely on you. You're failing them now, Greg. You're behaving irrationally. I'm going to see Koenig. You can't. You're confined here until further notice. Who's confining me? Security. Sanderson's on his way to command center. We couldn't stop him. Koenig, Sanderson. All right. Where's Koenig? Stand where you are. Where is he? Right here. You were confined at medical center. Sure. And that way, no one hears what I've got to say about the new planet. There is no new planet. So far, it's just a weather belt. Until we explore it and maybe, maybe find something else. And when you find the planet? If we find the planet, I'll determine whether or not it's habitable. There is a habitable planet. But you come back denying it. Sanderson, why would I do that? Because you can't stand the thought of us having a normal life again. Because in a normal lifestyle, we'd make our own decisions, have children, vote. And there'd be no place for Commander Koenig's dictatorship. That's why you won't tell us the truth. If there's a planet out there, everyone on Alpha will be told. Some people here may buy that, but I don't. Because once you're up there, how can we be sure what the Eagle computer's really telling you? All right. All right. Every piece of data from Tora will be processed here on Moonbase through main computer. Now, that way, everyone on Alpha will see what's happening as it happens step by step on their screens. Now, how does that suit you? And I'll buy it. Put that eagle on the pad, ready for liftoff. Right. Launch area, prepare eagle one for liftoff. Right, Mr. Carter. Stand up. So you're beating up the guards now, huh? 
What the hell is the matter with you, Sanderson? He's sick, Tony. Sick? No. I can just see clearer than the rest of you. Oh, yeah? Well, everything you see from now on is going to be via the monitors of the restriction area. Now, get him out of here. He needs treatment, Tony. I want him back in medical center. OK. But I want him constantly under guard. And I mean properly this time. Now, take him away. dealing with here is an extreme manifestation of tension. As the stress builds, it results in disorientation and hallucination. As in my case? Yes. No! Doctor! Let's have the treatment completed first and then see if you're so certain of that. What about Eva? She's free to go. She's not hallucinating. She's in love. You heard what Dr. Russell said. You're free to go, so go. I'll be in my courses. Medical emergency. Medical emergency. Recycling plants one and two. Recycling plants one and two. What's happening, Helena? I'll let you know as soon as I find out, Tony. Counter seven. How far in do you want to go? Not so far in that we can't pull away at the first sign of gravitational drag. Got a reading? Nothing to indicate a planet. But there can be anything in the center of all that. All right, let's hook up to main computer. Ready on main computer. Ready to receive data. No gravitational trace. You clear to approach to range three. Range two. What have you got, son? First atmospheric indications. High density, high carbon dioxide content, unbreathable. Are we still clear on gravitational pull? I'm getting a slight tremor here. Could be atmospheric vibration or the beginning of a gravity pull. Watch it, John. You could get sucked right into it. I'm going in a range one to confirm negative atmosphere indications. We turn back at the first confirmation of a gravity pull. We've got to make him go all the way in. We've got to make him find that planet. But if the atmosphere is unbreathable, then... Of course it's unbreathable. At the outer limits, it's like Earth. The tremor's gone, Maya. Looks like you're clear to go in as close as you like. Gravity. I can't believe it. Something's wrong. Let me switch to the onboard computer. Maya, everyone in Alpha will think we're holding back information. We stay with main computer like I said. Get Tony. You're clear to approach, John. 
Zero gravity. Repeat, zero gravity. It's impossible. Get him back. Tony, run a full systems check. You must be wrong. Okay, Sean. Approaching range one. Circuit one, okay. Circuit two, okay. Power lines one through to ten, okay. Circuit three, malfunction. Computer malfunction. Turn back now. Turn back, John. Turn back. <laughs> it's too late. Now you'll have to find that planet, Commander. Turn back, Eagle One. Do you read me? Commander, it's a planet. Come in, John. Maya, respond, please. Moon base Alpha to Eagle One. Moon base Alpha to Eagle One, come in, please. Oxygen recycling plant is less than 5% effective. Insufficient to maintain life. John, Maya, are you receiving me? Yes, Tony. This is Command Center to Eagle One. Are you receiving me? Transmission symptoms not functioning. No response. No, nothing. I have a reading on the damage. Pressure hull pierced. Transmission silenced. Oxygen recycling plant damaged. Engines and guidance systems intact. Intact? Alan, could you pull them out of there on the remote control? We'll give it a try. CDB. No sign of Sanderson. Well, how about level A? Well, that was cleared first. All right, we'll start again from square one. I want Sanderson found. Ah. I'm getting feedback from Eagle One. I'm firing forward thrusters. They've got us an automatic. They're trying to get us out of here.
Commander, we've only got enough oxygen for one hour. Sit down. I know a source that can clear oxygen. Vegetation. Lift off! We have lift off! But a plant needs the sun so it can start the photosynthesis process to turn carbon dioxide into oxygen. Or something that faces the sun, like a bright light. What is it? Where did all this vegetation come from? starvation, Helena. The atmosphere couldn't support both of us. One thing about oxygen deprivation. We can tell fast if there's been brain damage. Or else the patient wakes up wondering what all the worried faces are worrying about. John. John, do you hear me? John, do you know who I am? I never saw you before in my life. Dr. Russell. While we were concentrating on you, Sonson broke in here and sabotaged the main computer. Where is he now? He's in trouble tube D. But if we try to get to him, he'll just mow us down. Son, give me travel tube four, section D. Sanderson, it's urgent that you listen to me. If you can hear me, let me know. We have no time to lose. We're on a collision course. Oh, you admit there's a planet, then? Well, well, there is a planet, but it's in the earliest stages of formation. There's no green grass, no rivers, no trees. We've arrived 50 million years too early. No, you're lying, Koenig. It's not a habitable planet. It's just a weather belt. Just a weather belt? With a thick core of dust and unbreathable gas. 
Sanderson, we've been on your exploration team from the beginning. You've gotten us out of some pretty tight spots. What are you saying? He's saying what we both feel, Sanderson. He's saying out there on the moon's surface, we wouldn't think of questioning your judgment. What you say goes. Plenty of times, it's the only way we've stayed alive. But... But, well, now we're just not so sure. The commander may be telling the truth. He's lying! He's just trying to make us give up. On our present course, we'll be drawn into orbit around Tora. There is no orbit. We'll be swallowed by a vast swamp of dust. No! There is a habitable planet out there. The prediction says so. We've got to get through to women time. How? Maya, how long do we have? On our present course, we collide with the dust planet in eight hours. Eight hours. Tony, is there any way we can alter Taurus' trajectory? Well, no. We just don't have the megatons. Okay, then we go around it. Yeah. Alter the moon's course. 1999, the way this whole thing started. When the nuclear waste dumps blew up. You'll trigger deliberately the atomic waste? Ah, some of it. It's the only way. We have to create an explosion big enough to shift the moon one or two degrees off its course. You know, that could work if we had an atomic trigger and one hell of a lot of luck. Maya, give me a damage forecast on a sudden two degree shift. Anticipate severe damage in all sections. High fire risk. And people? Forecast zero survival rate. Attention all moon base personnel. We are faced with the enormous risk of blasting the moon out of its present collision course. To minimize the risk, I am ordering immediate and total evacuation. Just to stay in command. But suppose he is telling the truth. Trust me, like you trusted me before. Concentrate. Concentrate. Total concentration. Total concentration. We better take that along, just be on the safe side. Maya? Yes, sir. John, is it really worth taking all this stuff with us? If we can't shift the moon's course, those eagles will be our only home. How long are we going to survive on a fleet of transporter eagles? We'll be at each other's throats. You know, a lot of elephants said the same thing when we split away from Earth. John Koenig philosophy. If the chip's on the table, we're still in the game. Right on. Essential equipment's on board. The personnel boarding's complete, apart from pads six, eight, and nine. Transporter Eagle's ready for liftoff in nine minutes. Sanderson and the others? Now he's still in the travel tube. Sanderson, you know the danger of staying here when we trigger the waste dumps. This is your last chance. You can still make it to a boarding station and be evacuated safely. Respond, Sanderson. It's the last chance for all of you. Sanderson, listen to me. Sanderson, Eva, Chernick, Stevens, this is your last chance. You'll never do it. You'll never trigger the waste pits while we're still here. But just suppose you're wrong about this habitable planet. I'm not wrong. But just suppose, for a moment, that Koenig is telling the truth about this dust planet. To save the moon base, he'll have to trigger off the atomic waste, whether we're still here or not. I have information, Eva. I have the predictions. For the sake of every Alphan, we have to go through with this. Koenig, Stevens. D Dr. Russell diagnoses a sickness. She says we all have it. A sickness where a wish for the green planet is so strong that 
Our decisions are distorted. Do you believe that or me? Sanderson, don't you see? We're just not sure anymore. After all we've faced together, suddenly you're just not sure anymore. But this is different. It's got to be different. How different? You talk about the new planet, Sanderson. You talk about freedom from John Koenig's command. I say let's start now, the four of us. Let's vote on what we do. Vote? Well, why not? It's Koenig as a dictator, isn't it? Not you. Eva? I think we should vote. All right. All those in favor of evacuation. have a responsibility to the others? We just took a vote, Greg. Do you abide by it? Koenig! We're coming out. Good. The last eagle lifts off in five minutes. Sanderson, listen to me. There are two hours, 20 minutes to collision point. To orbit, understand? And then we use the transporters to transfer everyone to the new planet. We'll be swallowed by red dust and toxic gases. Sanderson, I'm coming down for you. There's no time, Tony. Stay where you are. You make one move to bring that transporter down, and Maya won't be Maya anymore. Computer. I want to know the moment we're going to orbit. If Taurus atmosphere gets into our recycling system, our air will be lethal. The air is clear on Tora. Eva, you've got to persuade him. It's their only chance. Put the gun away, Greg. Please. You were wrong. We were all wrong. Chair Nick Stevens, all of us. You'll thank me for this, Eva, for holding out against them. We'll walk on that planet, breathing real air, not recycled survival gases. Walking on grass, amongst trees, streams, the prediction. The prediction's wrong, Greg. Dr. Russell is right. It's an hallucination, a mirage. You too, Eva. You've gone over to Koenig's side. You know why he's doing it. He has to, to keep us on this barren rock. You're wrong, Greg. It's all in your mind. Greg, please do what the commander wants. Before all this happened, you believed in him. Believe in him now. Believe in him? I've never believed in him. Tony? Yeah? Eva can't get through to Sanderson. I'm going on down. No, Alan. Hold your position. That's an order. He's lied to us all along! And he's still lying now! And for that, he's got to die! Get the 
ETA to collision point. 57 minutes. Magnified. What is that thing? I don't know. We're not close enough. Oh, magnify, damn it. I am trying. Alan? Yes, Tony? There's something on the surface. Can you identify from your position? Can you give me any coordinates? I've got it. It's a moon buggy. That's Sanderson. John, Sanderson's down there waiting for you. Do you read me? Sanderson is waiting for you. Scanners indicate that he's amongst the rocks, but I cannot pinpoint him from here. Did you get that, John? Yeah, Tony, you got it. Thanks. How are we doing? OK. It'll be hard to pick him out in this terrain. We shouldn't be hovering up here, away from all the action. Yeah, I know how you feel, Alan. We can't risk anybody else. Sanderson is down there. I know that. If and when we pinpoint Sanderson, we'll go down after him, believe me. Setting? 18 minutes. Is that going to give you enough time? That's all the time we've got. Four minutes to blast away the concrete cap. Two minutes to attach this device to the silo and get back here. And 12 minutes at full thrust to blast ourselves as far away from here as we can get. Good luck. I'll need it. No sign of him. He's down there somewhere. Visual of Sanderson, continuing to scan. Eagle 3 calling Eagle 6. Any movement in Area 3, Alan? Eagle 6. Nothing so far, Tony. We'll continue search. Sweet coordinate two four. Right, Tim. Connecting charges now. Keep an eye out, John. Sanderson's around somewhere. Eagle 6 to Eagle 3. 
Connor Sanderson. Recheck your area, Tony. Maya, three o'clock. <laughs> Maya? Maya, can you hear me? John, Eagle 2's been hit. I've lost contact with Maya. Tony, keep trying. Okay, the cap's blown. Going into Lady Atomic Trigger now. Watch Sanderson. He's still dangerous.
so many bored people in all my life. Doctor, how much longer? At least another hour and a half. Oh. Oh. oh, come on, it's not bad. In fact, they're quite nice, particularly if you have an eye for nature. As I say, if you have an eye for nature. I think your system will work. The principle's perfectly valid. Saturation equals boredom. Well, the figures are showing trees, meadows, and streams until I can't stand another blade of grass, right? Mm -hmm. If you like nature, Doctor. So I did. Well, you said choose something from the picture library, right? That is what I call choice. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mother. Hmm. My mother was never like that. <laughs> 